Hi everyone, uh, I'm Zheng Fang. Uh, today I will um, make um, talk. Uh, <clears throat> I will present our work, which has been accepted by HVE TNLS. Uh, this work aims to solve open set domain adaptation problem. Okay, let's start. Hmm. First, uh, I will overview um, our presentation for a few minutes. Our presentation has four parts. The first uh, is uh, the first part is the introduction. Here, in the introduction, I will provide the examples, real work, and definition for upset or domain problem. And then I will um, analyze the problem from a theoretical field and then provide developer a learning bond for this problem. Then I will um, decide on the algorithm according to our theory. Last, I will discuss um, the performance of our model. Okay. So um, the first question is why open cell domain adaptation matters in the machine learning field. I will give an example. Give an example. Uh, there's a robot and a scientist. The robot has been taught um, how to learn, how to classify um, animals. And uh, one day, the robot asks the scientist, he thinks he has the ability to go outside to survive. And the robot tests the robot, and the scientist tests the robots and asks the robot a question. What's this? If, um, the robot answer is easy, it's a snake. Otherwise, the, um, the, uh, the answer is not right. So why the robots um, give such answer? Because the robot have an ability to recognize which is animal and which is not animal. If we give the robot a picture uh, which is not animal, the robot may still classify the picture, uh, the picture as an animal. So we want the robot have the ability to realize what it can, what it can do, and what it can do. So in domain adaptation, there are two domains. One is called the sole domain, and the other is called the target domain. The aim of um, domain adaptation is to use the, so, the, the data from a sole domain to help uh, solve the task in a target domain. In classical domain adaptation, um, the sole domain and the target domain have, uh, have used the same label space. However, in a graph we can find the target domain in the open set cases have an additional classes, including firm, coke, and the chair. So what is open set domain adaptation? The open set domain adaptation weak class assumption of classical domain adaptation and, uh, and assume that the target label space is larger than the source label space. Okay, here I will introduce the structural definition of open cell domain adaptation. Given a feature space, well, the samples are drawn from, and two label space, one is called the source label space and the other is called the target label space. The source label space is a subset of the target label space. In the graph, we found the source label space is contained by the target label space. And the, uh, the classes in the source label space is called the no classes. The classes in the target label spaces, but not in the, but not in the source label spaces is called a no classes. For simple, we assume the source label spaces are labeled from one to C. And the source domain is a joint distribution of a joint space, which is a, a product between the feature space and the source label space. A target domain is a joint distribution of a joint space, which is a product of, um, of uh, between the feature space and uh, the target label space. And uh, in open set domain adaptation, the distribution condition of no classes are different. So that is known as the domain shift. Now, given us the label source data, 
joined from the joint source distribu distribution and uh, label target data joined from the target marginal distribution. The aim of open cell domain adaptation is to train a target class file using this data such that we can classify no target samples into the correct no classes and classify a no target samples as a no. There are two challenges for open cell domain adaptation. The first challenge is how to classify samples from the unknown classes. And uh, the second challenge is the domain shift for samples from the known classes. And here I will introduce the related work. And before I finished my work, there are only two works uh, attempted to solve the open cell domain adaptation problem. The first paper is called Open Cell Domain Adaptation for Image and Action Recognition. And this work is the first, work, um, first paper for domain adaptation and they pro, um, propose the problem and uh, give the first open cell domain adaptation algorithm, ATI. And the second paper is called Open Cell Domain Adaptation by um, Back Propagation. And this paper proposed the first deep, deep open cell domain adaptation algorithm, SBP. And our work is our first work to research open cell domain adaptation theory and bridge the gap between theory and algorithm. Until now, our, um, our theoretical work has been used in many papers and those papers, um, including some top conference papers such as ICML. Okay, now let's begin our um, theoretical analysis. For simple, we use the label C plus one to represent all unknown classes. And the first problem I want to ask, how to estimate the unknown classes error for a given classifier? Okay, so um, we investigate the partial risk for unknown classes, which is defined in equation one. And what's the meaning, what's the partial risk for unknown classes? Is the meaning an um, error for for the classifier for a given classifier and the unknown classes under distribution um, marginal target marginal distribution conditioned on unknown classes it's clear that we can't estimate this uh, uh, risk partial risk directly because we haven't any labels about target labels uh, about target samples so what is the obstacles to estimate the partial risk by affinity and label samples? We want to answer this question. So um, to solve this problem, we define a special term called open set difference. The open set difference um, is a difference between two, um, between two um, special terms. One term is a positive term and the other term is a negative term. The positive term um, is uh, a special target risk over one minus the <clears throat> one minus the class prior for unknown classes. The target um, the negative term is a special um, source risk. So uh, the special target risk and the special uh, source risk. Uh, is are uh, given in equation two and equation three. And in equation two, um, we can find. Um, we, in equation two, we can uh, we can find uh, the special target risk. Um, measures the error. Um, for a class file, and uh, uh, and no class and all distributions, and the target marginal distribution and uh, the special source risk is a <clears throat> uh, is a error um, for the target class file for a given class file and uh, unknown classes under under the source marginal distribution so okay So if no domain shift, we can prove that the partial risk for a no classes is equal to some constant um, products, the open set difference. 
the constant is related to the unknown class prior. So we should note that if we know the value of a no class prior, open set difference can be estimated by finitely unlabeled samples. This, uh, this means if no domain shift and we know the value of a no class prior, the partial risk can be estimated by finitely unlabeled samples. So when there exists domain shift, what will happen? We will find uh, the following inequality give us an answer. The difference between partial risk for no classes and open set difference can be controlled by domain discrepancy between no classes. A no class prior uh, and this resource tell us a no class prior and the domain discrepancy between no classes are the obstacles um, to estimate the partial risk. So then we, want, we need to ask how to estimate the target risk. And we're using the relationship between open set difference and uh, the partial risk. We extend uh, the classical domain adapting theoretical bound to the open set cases. This bound are showing as follows. This bound, um, um, this bound tell us the target risk are contributed by source risk, distribution discrepancy, open set difference, and a constant, which is related to condition, con conditional distribution discrepancy. As we talked before, um, the partial uh, the no class, class file is important for open set, set domain attribution problem. And if we don't know the class prior, maybe the open set domain attribution problem cannot be solved. Uh, if the condition distribution are similar and there are large margins between different classes, then we, maybe the uh, no class prior can be estimated. So in the paper, for simple, we set the class prior as a free parent. Then uh, according to our theoretical bound, we mainly, uh, we mainly um, focus on minimizing our learning bound. This is, <clears throat> And uh, we also set the uh, hypothesis space as a kernel help space. Here, uh, I will introduce the techniques and the details for our model. Um, we, uh, in our paper, we use L2 loss to, um, to L2 loss function because the L2 loss function is least sensitive to um, should label. And we also use the project MMD distance to estimate the marginal distribution discrepancy and use the project MMD distance to estimate the class conditional distribution discrepancy. So what is the project MMD distance? Project MMD distance um, pro, um, maps um, source data and target data into a K plus one dimensional space by some kernel, um, by some kernel function. And then we measure the, diff the distance between centers of the project uh, source data and the project target data. Um, because we haven't any label for a target domain, so we use should label uh, in an iteration strategy to refine our target labels. And uh, this theory provides a solution for our alg algorithm. And this theory tells us um, our model can be solved by a magic enforced algorithm. And we named our, uh, our model DLD. Uh, and we evaluate our um, model in four different data sites with different deeper features, such as AlexNet, ResNet, and VGG. And there are totally 98 open set domain adaption tasks has been tested. And two different methods to evaluate the performance of domain adaptation. The first um, method is called OS accuracy. This accuracy normalized accuracy for all the classes, including the unknown 
as one class. Where star accuracy, normalized accuracy only on no classes. And uh, the following top um, table shows that um, our performance, uh, our model, the performance on Office 13 one with feature AlexNet, our model has achieved 5% improvement compared to baselines, including uh, ATI, OpenSide Domain Deputation um, Methods, ATI, and the OSVP. And uh, um, I also um, conduct um, experiments on Office Home data sites and the Image Cloud data sites. Um, the performance has been achieved about uh, at least 2% improvement compared to other algorithm, um, baseline algorithm. This shows our, mode, our theoretical guided algorithm, DLD, can achieve good performance. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, James, uh, for your uh, presentation. A very important problem of the unknown <laughs> of the AI, machine learning. Okay, right now we uh, invite the questions from our audience. Uh, may I ask one question? Yes, please. <clears throat> yes, hi, uh, Song. So uh, about the evaluation, can you go to the, the last, I think this last second one? Okay. Uh, the next one, maybe? Okay. Yes, so how, how did you measure the uh, unknown classes, the, the accuracies? So did you consider each of them as, as one class or, or you separate them? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Um, OS, uh, for open set domain adaptation, it's important to measure the accuracy for unknown uh, classes. And uh, for uh, to evaluate, um, to, uh, for uh, two methods to evaluate the performance OS and OS star, um, we can compute, we can, the, uh, no, the performance of unknown uh, classes can be computed by a function of OS and OS star. And uh, if the OS is larger than OS star, we will find that the unknown class and the performance of unknown class is very good. And uh, the performance of the no classes is not so good. If OS star, the performance of OS star is larger than OS, then we will find the performance of no classes is good, but the performance of uh, no classes is not good. So um, here I haven't show the performance of a uh, no, um, uh, the accuracy of a uh, no classes because the, no, uh, the accuracy of a uh, no classes can be concluded by OS and OS star. Can be okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Oh, hi, hello. Um, yeah, I, I, I have yeah. some questions. Yeah, good. I mean, it is interesting work to establish the theory uh, for open set domain adaptations. So, in your assumptions, you assume that the unknown class is only one class. Have you ever considered the case the unknown class can be multiple class? If in this case, do you have any idea to establish some theory on this? Okay. Uh, that's a good question. So first, uh, we need to go back to say, um, what are uh, uh, open set domain adaptation want to solve? The open set domain adaptation want to answer to um, classify a uh, no target samples as a uh, no, but uh, it, it doesn't consider to classify a uh, no target samples into the correct uh, no classes. So that's the distinction. So at this time, um, we need to consider uh, multiple class uh, um, for a no, for a no, because we can gather all the uh, all the uh, uh, no classes as one label. That's decided by the problem itself. Okay, so I uh, one further question on this: If just consider one unknown classes, so can we consider this problem is do all the detection first, and then you can after the all detection you can do classification. Okay. 
uh, online, uh, on, I, I have think the problem uh, online open cell domain adaptation. And uh, I think online open cell domain adaptation is more important than the than, um, um, classical open cell domain adaptation. And uh, that, that is the uh, future work we want to solve. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have one more question uh, from Ben. Ben. Oh, hi. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, and uh, first of all, thanks for your great talk. And uh, can you go to the last function of your algorithm? Um, okay. um, say, uh, yeah. say this yeah, in, in this in this function, I noticed that the open set difference, right? The last mm -hmm. term, uh, it it maybe go to negative, right? When you're minimizing this loss function, yes. So, are there any negative effect if this one goes to negative, or, or in your, uh, in your, uh, in or in the kernel helper space, this one will not go to negative? Have you checked that? Um, in fact, I have researched the problem. Um, when I use some different models, such as, uh, um, CNN and uh, deep neural networks, I found. Uh, uh, the open set difference will be negative. And uh, why? Because, uh, why this is important? Uh, because I can prove uh, if a negative uh, open set difference, this will result in a large um, distribution discrepancy. Oh, let's very seriously because um, if we want to minimize the open set difference, and uh, this will result in a large distribution shift. So to solve this problem, um, we, um, we make some, ref um, we make some revise of the open set difference. And uh, this work has been, um, has been, so has been uh, researched and uh, submitted to HVE TNLS. Um, if you are interested, uh, I will show, uh, I will show uh, this uh, paper. That's our future okay. work. Okay, so yeah. the, you, you mean in the, maybe in the kernel, like the shadow model, this one will not go to negative, right? Yes. Uh, probably, uh, yeah. But for the deep model, it may go to negative and bring the negative effects for our performance. Right? Yeah, because the kernel uh, method, kernel class file is not very flexible, but for the deeper class file, is much more classified uh, and flexible. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think we, we are about time to finish the presentation. Thanks, Jen, uh, for your very uh, interesting and exciting uh, presentation. Okay, thanks. so I think, okay, thanks.